From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, it's your boy, Hank Moodsby, calling in. I've actually had some stuff weighing on my mind, and with all of the things that are ramping up in the world recently, I was hoping that you might be able to cover around one to three topics that I've been seriously thinking about. One of them is that I keep seeing the doomsday prophecy kind of stuff popping up. You know, like I think Joe Rogan recently posted something about how an MIT application predicted that the world will end in 2040. I just want to know what you guys think about that. Um, another thing that's been weighing on my mind is the whole simulation idea um, that statistically there's a 50-50 chance that we're in a simulation. I've seen pros and cons for being in both, but it just kind of creeps me out knowing that this is just all an intricate simulation. It sounds crazy, I know, but, uh, you know, what are the possibilities? I'd just like to hear what you guys think about that. And then the last thing, I was just hoping that you could cover the idea that as I get older, I'm starting to realize that UFOs and all of the sci-fi stuff that we know and love, like, uh, you know, mythological beasts and, you know, curses and demons and stuff is all kind of one and the same. Um, it's all a bunch of really well done uh, elaboration on stories from people that uh, were out of it or misremembered something. And the, most of the stuff we see is just really advanced government tech that we don't know about or don't really understand. So um, I was hoping at some point you guys could cover any of those three um, because it just seems interesting and also, you know, as we get older and as we start to understand things, things kind of aren't what they used to be. Hank out. Hank out. This well, is Hank, great. Hank gave us three three topics that I just want to throw out here, I guess, and, and discuss with you, Ben, and then we want to hear what you think. <laughs> if you are listening to this, like, do any of these spark your interest? Would you like us to talk about these the same way Hank would? Um, so let's get started. First one. Doomsday prophecies, Ben. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of them. Mm. They're always around. Mm. Uh, s- sneaking on the periphery, making their way into our minds and into Joe Rogan's mind, I guess. Sure. <laughs> the one in particular that was mentioned there was the 2040 MIT. I believe it was a study. I know we've talked about this, Ben. We we have, right? Right. Yeah. The, uh, the assessment that's that attempts to comprehensively paint a picture of civilizations, uh, destabilization or collapse, I believe. And that's, that's a really interesting one uh, for us, Hank, because that study was done in 1972 and it remains pretty relevant in a chilling way today. They're, they're thinking that, um, it's called like the limits to growth model without being too dry it's not the same as absolutely predicting the future. It's saying that if you use this specific limits to growth model, which we can explain, then the fall of society, as we understand it, will take place in about 18 years. Um, yes. It, it, yeah. And it's what they look at is like the idea of natural resources running out or in the case of water being contaminated such that they are no longer useful for human consumption and rising cost occurring in step with that. So that, you know, the idea would be one day we'll live in a world where an an orange is a rare thing because of the water it takes to grow them and an orange costs you $10. And then shortly after that, you just won't have or- the oranges won't be a thing. <laughs> so like, yep. it's scary. Well, it makes total sense. Well, it makes total sense. As global population grows, the industries that support that population have to grow 
you know, equally or even more so than the population itself. So they, so more food and other goods and services can be provided. And like you said, the finite resources have to then be used at a higher and higher clip as the industry grows. And uh, it is, it's pretty horrifying because you can almost feel it now. Uh, like in your bones, you can feel that it's coming as you look around. Uh, and then, you know, of course, you watch World War Three kind of happening before our eyes. It, it does. It feels like the limits to human growth are, are being uh, hit. Are being discovered. Yikes. Yeah, that's that's another issue. Uh, so we do want to talk about this study just a bit more. Uh, it was considered controversial at the time, and a lot of opportunists took it to further their own agendas. Also, there were, there were a surprising amount of conspiracy theories regarding this because the limits to growth model upon which that study is based was published by an outfit called the Club of Rome, which is that's the kind of thing where it makes you want to have like a phrase of the day, you know, so we could have a Pee Wee Herman esque. Uh, a cavalcade of celebration. But yeah, the Club of Rome is a foundational, at least some of their work is a foundational part of this, which gives some some folks uh, who are critics of the Club of Rome, it, it gives them the sense that maybe not everything's on the up and up with the MIT study. We think it is. We think it is legit. It's legit science, right? And science can always be approved upon. But we don't think people are trying to conspire against you necessarily. And we did a club of rome video maybe i think i know so. we, we have. definitely did a secret societies uh checklist I th i'm pretty sure i remember editing that video what is mm. the club of rome stuff they don't want you to know yep we did it yeah okay eight years so check ago. that out eight years <laughs> ago <laughs> so check that out not not too too much has changed uh regarding the club of rome's mission uh, but things might not be, well, okay, I don't even want to say that on air. Things are dire, but the when they revisited this study, in particular, I want to point to Gaia Harrington, who updated the model for the Yale Journal of Ecology in November of 2022, and Harrington's conclusion is a little, maybe, I don't know, it's still dire. That's the thing. It's still dire. We're in the car. The car is hurtling headlong to a tree. We just have to determine how we're going to handle the crash. That's where we're at. There's not much time to swerve in this accident. Uh, but Harrington concludes that society has, quote, about another decade to change courses and avoid collapse by investing in sustainable technologies and equitable human development. So sustainable technologies... You know, and one of the conspiracy theories you'll hear about that is, um, well, you'll hear two things. One of the one that is a, a conspiracy theory is that companies are top down. Companies and institutions, very wealthy people, are pushing sustainable technology because it's a new way for them to make a lot of money or control aspects of civilization. That doesn't that hasn't been proven. But what has been proven is that, yeah, the, the traditional energy methods, fossil fuel in particular, have unavoidable consequences. Gener the human species, as long as it survives, will be paying for those consequences, along with the rest of the natural world. But sustainable technology also has some, also has some skeletons in its closet, depending on what you're asking about. Like, uh, you know, let's say you own an electric car and every day you plug it in and you think it's great that you're not contributing to uh, the use of gas. But if you're doing that in an area of the world where the electric grid is coal powered, then all you're doing is moving that fossil fuel further away. <laughs> you just don't have to look at the mm -hmm. pump. You know what I mean? Well, uh, Ben, do you want to switch just quickly? We can hit on the other two. We don't have to spend a lot of time on them. First is simulation theory. Something that we mention in episodes across the span of our history, but we haven't done a simulation theory episode. That's so weird. It's one of your favorites, isn't it? Like we've talked about mm -hmm. it. I feel like a depth. We well, we've talked about it with I think Dan maybe and and maybe off the books with Lucky and a few other people, but um, 
man, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. The holographic universe is what we used to call it back in yeah. the day when we were yeah, we in did. video land. Uh, we should do that for sure. I want to do that. Okay, um, yeah, let's do that as an episode. I can't believe we haven't done that yet. That is a great idea, Hank, and that's something, Matt, I think you and I will uh, immensely enjoy. Uh, yeah, we should also do, you know what we should do going back to that first idea as well, is we should also look at Congo and Cobalt. That's going to be huge. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do that. Okay, we got two episodes down already. Here's our third one. Um right. The big takeaway from Hank, I'm sorry, I called Hank too. I apologize to you, Hank. I apologize to everybody else for calling people and bugging them. But <laughs> the sure. <laughs> sure it's delightful. I've been on the phone with you. You're great to talk to on the phone. And that's well, a, like a guy who well, hates phones saying that. Again, to each their own. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it's like to be on the receiving end of one, one of my blab fests. But Hank is in medical school right now, nursing school, and going through just all kinds of rigorous learning while just trying to survive in the world and, you know, get some work done as well and make some money. All the things. And Hank expressed the concept. I'm just going to read the, the quote here. As I get older, things are starting to get weirder, it seems, and then weirder. And I think that's a feeling that many of us probably share. Uh, the, the world just seems to be less and less and less concrete when it comes to <laughs> what we think and believe, maybe what we be take as fact. And it does feel like there's a direct match to the Internet. It's, again, a, a larger topic we've discussed many a time. But uh, the third thing that Hank mentioned really kind of fits that theme. When, he's, when he states that all of the science fiction stuff is really just storytelling over you know the course of thousands of years with humanity when it comes to myths and beasts and curses and demons and unidentified aerial phenomena and all this stuff. It just feels like we put different names on it over those thousands of years, right? The same kind of concepts and ideas and observations. Um, and... Again, correct me if I'm wrong, Hank, but it seems like you just are looking for an episode that discusses maybe the connections between a lot of those things and how maybe a lot of it has been whatever the prevailing government or religion or power has been kind of cooking up uh, behind closed doors. Like these instances of technology that do seem magical and are beyond our understanding, but in reality... It's all mundane stuff being created by the people who have the most access to resources. 